So, hi, uh, I'm Jim Zub, and I'm here with another kind of comic tutorial video. Um, I shot that Q&A the other day, and I actually quite liked how it turned out. I thought it looked pretty good, and uh, just the ability to talk about this stuff and be a little more casual about it rather than formally typing everything out, I think uh, is kind of nice and give you all a chance to see me and, and get a sense of who I am. Um, for this particular video, I've got a subject that I've been wanting to cover for quite some time. And it kind of encompasses, I think, one of the core concepts of, of comic storytelling, and also something I see that is probably the most common error um, that, that artists who are starting off in comics, or in some cases, even experienced artists, aren't always thinking about when they put together their pages. And that's not to say that the artist is the sole uh, responsibility for this. You know, the everyone in the creative team has a job to do when it comes to doing the comic. And whether you're the writer or the artist or the letterer or the colorist, you know, everyone working on the book uh, needs to know what other people are doing and how best to achieve, you know, the goals of making awesome finished comic pages. And so I think it's crucial at the writing stage and particularly at the rough stage that the writer and the artist have a really clear understanding in terms of page real estate how you're going to use these panels, how much information needs to be in each of these panels, how that's going to enhance the storytelling, and probably the most important thing, the reading order of the word balloons and uh, the character order in those panels so that the word balloons are going to follow along in order as the reader's eyes you know, move through the page naturally. Um, a lot of times I will see letterers and I you know once you've worked on this stuff and you can um you see behind the curtain how you know how the sausage is made as they say uh you can see creative teams struggling with these things in some cases uh letterers who are desperately trying to cram in all kinds of dialogue and text into a page where it doesn't fit properly uh artists who are you know drawing things and the writer not adapting well to that artwork, not adjusting their text, not adjusting the dialogue to make the page flow. You know, colorists that uh, maybe are, are adding all sorts of amazing special effects, but aren't able to focus our attention as the eye is moving across the page. You know, everyone needs to be able to work together on this stuff. But the first kind of most crucial one, I think, is adapting that script to the page. And that's not to say that the artist's job is to um, is to draw exactly what the writer says. You know, the the script is meant to be a guide. The script is meant to, you know, structure out this um, story and dialogue. If if it is a full script, obviously, if it's plot driven, kind of what they classically call the Marvel style, it's going to be a lot looser, and the artist is going to have a lot more control over that panel flow, with the writer coming in afterward to dialogue it. But the vast majority of modern comics are produced what's called full script. So the script actually outlines, this is what's in panel one. This is what characters are saying. This is what's in panel two. This is what characters are saying. And how that gets translated to the page is so uh, valuable in, in terms of everyone being able to envision the story and everyone's job being easier as you move down the line. So as a writer, you know, my job is to describe these things well, to uh, kind of inspire the rest of the team and, and help them to envision what I'm trying to uh, describe, you know, what, what this is supposed to look like, what the most important parts uh, visually of the story will be, where characters are, everything from the, you know, the sense of the color palette, the weather, time of day, all that kind of stuff. But even uh, how I write that, you know, when I describe a particular panel, if I put um, a description of, of characters in a certain order, then as the artist is reading it, they're going to imagine those characters in that order as well. So the more organized I am and the more careful I am about um, describing those characters in, in the proper order, the better it's going to look. Enough of you looking at my face. Let's look at some really cool examples here from a pair of artists who I absolutely love working with on projects. So the first one is Corey Smith. Uh, Corey is the current artist on Conan the Barbarian. And every time I say I work on Conan the Barbarian, I get a big smile on my face because it's uh, one of my absolute favorite series when I was growing up. And now I get to write the ongoing adventures of uh, of Conan. So 
these two pages are from uh, Conan number 19. Uh, it's a really fun story to be able to build this and, and work with Corey on this. And one of the reasons why I absolutely love working with him is because his storytelling is so strong. Look at these page roughs. These are thumbnail roughs. They're very small panels, and these could be done digitally. In this case, I believe he's drawing these traditionally. Um, and everything in terms of the storytelling is so clear. Everything you see in these panels and probably the most helpful part is the way he is numbering each of the either narrative or dialogue balloons. And that corresponds to my script. Let me show you how this looks. So this is page three from the story. And the way I organize my script, I've said this many times, I follow a um, script format that's used by people like uh, Greg Pak, uh, Fred Van Lenty, and uh, Ron Mars. And they really sold me on the density of this particular script format that you're able to pack in tons of information, but it's all very, very clear. It's really easy for the reader to follow along and understand it. And by reader, I mean the artist, the letterer, the, you know, the, the uh, editor, everyone in the team is able to easily see what's going on. So we've got obviously the page number, we've got the panel numbers all very quickly built down. So you can look and instantly see there's five panels on the page and that there are in this case, nine different text elements. And those might be narrative captions or they could be dialogue balloons. They might be sound effects. And if a character is breaking that dialogue into multiple balloons, I'll break that into multiple numbers as well. And so, in a very simple fashion, each of the panels is very clearly described, what's happening in that panel, how it all fits together, and then the narration. And because those are clearly numbered, Corey follows that same numbering along panel to panel. So you can see that here, counting all the way one to nine. Each of those panels is clear, the storytelling is clear. And so right from the get-go, I can look at this the editor can look at it, everyone in the team can look at it and know that we're getting the proper information, that I know what the overall angle of each of these panels is going to be, where the focal points are, how the composition is going to work, how our eye is going to flow down the page as we're reading through these five different panels. The same thing happens on the next page. It's a more complex page in terms of layout, but because all those dialogue balloons are called out, first of all, we know that the page is going to work. You know, traditional American, uh, North American comics, you're going to go from left to right down the page. And we know that the storytelling is now going to function. We know what the composition is. We know what all the panel order is. And that probably most importantly, there is enough room for the letterer to put the dialogue in order. I can't tell you how crucial this is to making good comics. And so many times I will see portfolios from new artists and they're capable draftsmen. They're able to, to draw out amazing scenes or good paneling. Sometimes their storytelling is even quite strong, but the most common error I see is that they don't leave enough room for dialogue. And so here, you've got a pretty dense page full of dialogue. You have 13 different text elements on this page. Obviously there are pages that are action packed and I get out of the way for the artists. I want them to show off amazing visuals. This is a dialogue heavy page. So we've got to have room for that text to be able to fit and flow. And Corey does a fantastic job all the way through. And what that means is, is when we get to the actual printed version of these pages, everything stays clear. So you can see these panels, they're beautifully uh, rendered in terms of line art and in terms of color, but more importantly, the storytelling stays true to those original thumbnails. If the story works in the original rough stage, if it's clear and readable in terms of panel and uh, you know dialogue order, then it's going to work here, you know, in the final printed version as well. And that's what's so, so important. Now, the letterer has made some small aesthetic changes in terms of panel, you know, the caption order and what may have you. But on the whole, because, um, you know, Corey was thinking about space and ensuring that there was enough room for that dialogue, no matter where those final balloons fall in exact position in the end, there's still enough room for everything. And that's what is so, so important as an artist works away. And like I said, probably the most common error that I see in pages from new artists, uh, 
particularly artists who are new to comics and not used to the panel format, not used to leaving space for dialogue, captions, sound effects, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, working on Conan is a real thrill for me. Um, I love these characters. I love building these stories and working with the team to make this stuff and being able, even at that, that rough phase to envision how the final issue is going to come together, just makes it all that much better. Let me move on to another example here. This is a thumbnail, uh, rough from Max Dunbar, another artist I absolutely love to work with. This is from the first issue of Dungeons and Dragons Infernal Tides. Uh, one of my favorite miniseries that I've worked on. And, and Max and I have worked on a multitude of different comics together, a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. We've done some uh, champions together. We did a creator owned series called Stone Star. I think Max is genuinely one of the most exciting uh, new talents in comics. His work is really blown up over the last few years and he's so, so good at what he does. And again, even at this early stage, what I want you to notice is that there's a clarity there. Yes, this is a rough and sketchy kind of thumb now, but and it's a little hard to tell but there is a again all the dialogue and the different elements are counted out one two three four five six seven eight nine on this particular first page and all the compositional choices all the storytelling choices that max is making you know based on the script that i put together um they hold well here in the rough stage they're clear here in the thumbnail stage and so when you add all the rendering, all the you know awesome ink to line art, all the amazing uh, colors from Neil and, and you know the lettering from the rest of our team, like, um, or sorry, Sebastian is the colorist, Neil was the letterer. Um, when you add in all those amazing elements, it looks great and it's professional quality, but everything that makes it work was still in the thumbnail stage. If the comic works in the thumbnail stage, then it's going to work better you know, in the final. If there are problems in the storytelling, if the clarity is not there in the thumbnail stage, it's gonna be that much harder to have that clear storytelling, to have that really uh, you know, strong final presence on the page. So, um, you know, Max just delivers on it. He absolutely knows what he's doing. And I love watching him sort of cut loose on these pages and do awesome things. So what I wanna do is, I wanna show you another example from Infernal Tides. There's lots of action in this issue and there's big full page kind of blowouts and, and all sorts of cool stuff. But because we're talking about panel flow and we're talking about word balloons, I picked uh, purposefully a very uh, dense page. So this is page nine of the first issue, and it is jam packed with dialogue. Um, we're introducing characters to each other. We're setting up sort of party and a bunch of the, uh, you know, the, the information that we need to make this story roll. And in this first panel, you know, we've got six characters that are all interacting with each other and chatting around a table. That's a difficult scene for just about anyone. Max makes it look easy because he is so good at what he does. So let's check the uh, the script here. It's pretty straightforward. I keep my uh, descriptions pretty terse once we get into the story, particularly if I'm not too worried about the details. You know, Max and I have worked together so long and he knows uh, the aesthetic of Dungeons and Dragons. I don't have to describe to him what a tavern should look like. You know, I don't have to tell him what a Dungeons and Dragons aesthetic is. If I was working with a different artist, I might go into more detail about what sort of features would be here. But when you've got someone you trust and you've got a great working relationship, I can just get to the point. So we cut ahead now. The Baldur's Gate party, which is our, our group, is gathered around a table in a small tavern. Minsk and Delinar are standing with Aubrey while Cridal, Shandy, and Neris sit and listen. So we've got the caption, and then we've got each of these characters introducing themselves. The minute that I put these down in this order, I am setting up an expectation. I'm setting an expectation in terms of the letterer and in terms of Max, the artist. Max now knows that Aubrey is the first one to speak in this panel, then Minsk, Delina, Neris, Shandy, and Cridal. So because we have all these characters and they all need to talk, but our eye is also moving from you know, left to right across the page, we need that character order to be intact. And so here we've got this tavern, we're showing that establishing shot of the scene, but we also have lots of room over the characters' heads for dialogue. And that's so, so important. We also have them in the order that they will be speaking, 
right? So if I go back, we've got to have Aubrey, Minsk, Delina, Neris, Shandy, Cradle. All these characters are going to be talking. So that's the character order we have here, right? So as we move across the table, all those characters will be able to speak in order and it will all stay organized. Now, when you see the line art here that uh, Max has done, first of all, it's awesome. He's an amazing artist and beautiful. And he's done a great job here setting up uh, a light source for Sebastian, our colorist, to come in and add a ton of mood. He's got the cast shadows from the cross beams and all kinds of stuff like that. But again, all the characters are in order. You may look at this panel and you think, man, it feels a little bit empty. It feels a little bit hollow here at the top. But that's because this is an incomplete page. This is about leaving space for the dialogue. This is part of a process as we build towards a final story page. So we've got the characters all sitting in order. I love the little foreground stuff, uh, you know, that uh, that Max has added in here. Max loves drawing dwarves, so he adds a little dwarf in the foreground on the left. And then this is actually Joe Manganiello, who's uh, an uh, actor who loves Dungeons and Dragons, and Max is a big fan, and they're friends of each other. So he worked them into a little cameo here in the foreground. But that's not the important part. The important part, obviously, is our heroes all sitting around chatting. And then we've got the final color version here. And notice, again, now that the dialogue is all here on the page, it no longer feels empty. It no longer feels like it's, uh, you know, uh, wasted space. It's all part and parcel of building that panel to make it as strong as possible. We've got the caption. We've got each character speaking in order. We don't have to worry about balloon tails getting crisscrossed or reading order being a problem. It's a nice organic feel as we move through the page. Moving on to the next three panels on this page, more dialogue. It is a really, really chatty one. And so we've got the characters talking. Aubrey and Minsk are chatting back and forth. And generally speaking, I want the characters to stay in the order that they are in the previous panel. That if, if you know, Aubrey is on the left and she spoke first, it's hard if I start switching around who the first speaker in the next panel is. So I'm trying to keep her motivating each of these, you know, chunk of dialogue. So she says more about the backstory for this particular adventure. She speaks to Minsk. She speaks to Neris. And then she speaks again. And as we move to the thumbnail version, we've got all that in order again. Each of those dialogue callouts numbered, so it's easy for us to tell what's going on. The characters are really sketchy and loose. You know, this is Max's sort of thumbnail gesture um, as a style and as a look. And but all the info is there. There's a sense of character posing. There's body language. There's attitude, and there's room for the dialogue. So now we go to the line art version. Again, big open areas. Max has drawn a little bit of the hearth here and some of that stone texture, but he's not going overboard. And there's no point in him rendering tons of extra information because the majority of that's going to be covered by dialogue anyways. So he's left space for it. It works really well, but he's not over rendering or going to town on stuff that's not gonna show up on the final printed page. Big open areas for the text and dialogue. And here's how those panels all fit together. Again, uh, you see it in the previous version and it feels a little bit empty, but once we fill that with that dialogue, all that we're focused on in terms of the artwork is the character posing and the attitude and the body language. And all that dialogue fills up the rest of the space well. Moving on to the last panel on the page, nice and simple. Cradle and Shandy have a little back and forth. Max thumbnails it out, everything's there in order. Lots of room between them for that text and the final payoff. No background at all here, just a simple blank space so that we've got room for that text between the two characters. And so what could have easily been in a page overwhelmed with uh, detail and overwhelmed with too much, um, you know, too many characters and not enough space, Max has kept it really, really well organized. So here you can see the full script page. There's 20 different text callouts, which is pretty dense. Um, back in the day, you've got certain writers, I, you know, Chris Claremont comes to mind where he would pack in 20, sometimes up to 25 or 30 different text elements on a page. But it's relatively rare in modern comics to have them this chatty, but I need to cover a lot of ground in terms of plot so we can get back to the action. 
And you've got a pro like Max and the rest of our team putting it all together, making it look easy. So you've got that really dense script page. And this all fits on one page of script, which is kind of nice as well. Um, as much as possible, I try and keep it to one page of script equals one page of comic. Sometimes I'll go over if I need to describe a lot of different things on a page with a lot of different dialogue, but here it all manages to squeak its way in and fit all on one page. And then you can see the finished result, nice and clean, even from this pulled back view where you can't read every single balloon easily, you know what the panel order is, you know what the reading order is and the composition holds clear, okay? So if you're making comics, whether you're the writer or the artist or anyone else in the team, I highly recommend that you um, learn how this stuff works, particularly thumbnailing and particularly making and formatting your script in a way that the artist has all the information they need and knows exactly how much space to leave for dialogue. The more organized you are in the writing stage, the easier it is for the artist to deliver what you need the uh, more organized the artist is and the clearer they're able to make their roughs, the easier it is for everyone else in the team to see what the final result will be and for everyone to, to give comments and feedback and make sure that the final result is something we're all gonna be proud of. If you haven't done this stuff before, this might seem uh, you know completely new to you in terms of comic book storytelling and I hope this has been helpful to you. If you know this stuff, Awesome. I hope this is a strong example of the basics and uh, that you share this video with other people and uh, let them know that, that this is kind of how it's done. So in either case, uh, thanks for watching along. I hope you found it really useful. If you want to uh, pick up any of my comics, obviously Conan the Barbarian or Dungeons and Dragons, uh, all the different books that I've put together, you can find out information about them and all kinds of other tutorials that I've written over the years at jimzub.com. And if you really want to support me and dig in deeper, you can also go to my Patreon page where I have uh, over 250 scripts and pitches from various comics that I've written over the past decade. You can go through that archive, compare the scripts to the finished versions, and learn how comics are made for less than the price of a coffee. That's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed it and take care.